Do you ever have to deal with somebody that has these like outbursts of anger or any emotional outburst? It's something that should have been taken care of in the life of a leader before you know a leader ever got into any leadership position. <laughs> when we say, well, it's an outburst of anger, they get angry all the time. But actually what it is, is issues on the inside have never been dealt with. But I want to talk about how to deal with that. Let me tell you two stories. First one is my dad and myself, when I was probably about 10 years old. And we were, we lived on a ranch, right? Had a lot of cattle. My dad and I were at the far end of the field picking up a load of hay with it, my grandfather's pickup truck. We were bringing the load of hay, hay bales back. We could get like 40 bales on this pickup truck and it was a heavy load, tall, up high. And as we're coming back up the field, looking ahead you could see the cattle had gotten out of the corral, out of the barnyard and they were coming down onto the field. Somebody had left the gate open or who knows, the cows had somehow bumped it open. And so my dad says, well you go on the left side Al and I'll go on the right side with the truck so I'm gonna get out of the truck and I'm gonna run and we're gonna push these cows back up into the barnyard well the cows didn't push back <laughs> they started running around us and pretty soon the cows are going all over the place well on the side of the field it goes up into the the mountain and there's a big bush forest there a lot of big trees and stuff instantly my dad gets angry at these cows and he begins to chase them with the pickup truck and so I'm like I don't know what to do so I just went up into the side of the mountain there and and sat in the trees and watched because there's nothing I could do at this point because when he got mad I mean yeah I just get out of the way you know he would pick one cow and he would chase her until she went up into the bush right and then you couldn't get up there with the truck so then he would turn around and he'd go back and he'd find another cow and he would chase her and he's just like doing donuts on the field and pretty soon the ba bales of hay are falling off and then he's running over the bales of hay and then they're all getting busted and the truck is bouncing and there's blue smoke coming out and there's mud flying and everything and he chases every cow one after another after another until they've all gone up into the hills. And then he drives home. And so I'm just sitting there for a while, let the cows settle down and I slowly chase them back into the, into the barnyard. And you think about that, the outburst of anger is so destructive and it's so silly because all we had to do was take a few minutes. I mean, we had herded those cows all over the place. It was not a problem. We knew how to do it. You just take your time. And, uh, but he was mad because the gate was open <laughs> and so took it out on the cows. But it wasn't enough that my dad had a terrible temper <laughs> at about the same time still, you know, about 10 years old, I had built a little cabin two-room cabin, had a, like a main room and a bedroom, a port, nice porch and a roof on it. We had a sawmill on our farm, so we had kind of an unlimited supply of lumber and boards. And uh, I'd spent, you know, a couple weeks building this cabin, and it was looking really cute. And about finished, and there's this one nail that wouldn't go in, and it bends over, and I straighten it up and try to put it in again, and it bends over. It did that three or four times. And I just flew into such a rage, I grabbed this big hammer, and smashed that whole cabin right to the ground. As if that's gonna fix something. <laughs> One bent nail. <laughs> How stupid it is. But at the time we don't realize it because it takes over. It's actually a spirit that takes over and it's not a godly spirit. It's a demonic spirit. <laughs> so I had to make a decision that I would never ever fly into a rage again. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Two aspects, first one is how to deal with anger in our own lives. But then even a more challenging one is how to deal with anger in the life of someone else. I mean, people that have these outbursts of anger, your leader, like let's say, you know, you'll be working on something or you do something that they don't like and they're just this bang, they're angry at you. And you may have noticed that some of the, what would we say, highest ranking leaders can be some of the most insecure people. And that's where emotional outbursts and that kind of stuff comes out of. It comes out of that insecurity um, and fear, really. Uh, lack of confidence. Really, uh, it's a lack of the presence of the Word of God in your life. But a lack of emotional control affects your leadership in terrible ways. In fact, it puts such a ceiling, such a limit on your leadership. And it scares people away. 
it stops them from receiving from you. It stops the influence that you normally would have or that you should have in the lives of other people. And honestly, any leader that I've ever been around that responds to things emotionally, you know, out of control emotionally, I, there's no way they're going to influence my life. I mean, I'm just, just looking for a way to get out of there. That's all I want. Just don't be around them. Peace on the inside is foundational. One of the main purposes of leadership is to rule in peace or to bring peace over chaos on the outside. And that's what people are looking for in our leadership. And anyone that has outbursts of unhealthy emotion is just adding to the chaos. They're part of the problem, not part of the solution. Don't be that person. Okay, so we're talking about emotional control in two, two areas. The first one is our own personal lives. As a leader, we need to have our emotions under control to operate in peace, to never outburst in anger or any other unhealthy emotion. And the second one is when we're dealing with leaders who we are to follow, who tend to be angry or tend to exhibit those kind of immature emotional responses when things don't go their way, especially if you do something they don't like. So to fix our own emotional outbursts, that's a lot easier because we, we get to control that. We get to, to choose that. And that's really where it starts. Two things. First one is learn to walk softly. In other words, decide ahead of time how you're going to respond to any given situation. Decide ahead of time so that when you meet the situation, you don't respond incorrectly. You don't tend to blow up. You don't tend to react. But you tend to respond with what you've already decided needs to be done. And I... Uh, have worked hard to develop that. How to always respond in every situation softly so that peace remains and wisdom is there, right? So that I could think straight and act straight. The second thing is to learn how to talk softly. Proverbs says that a soft answer turns away wrath. In other words, peaceable answer, right? Or response rules over chaos. So there you are. If you're talking softly, you're the leader. Peace is in control. Or the second scenario is when someone who leads us can't control their own emotions and they have these emotional outbursts, anger. To me, it seems much more reasonable <laughs> to be able to teach and train and require emotional stability from our own life and from the lives of those we lead than it is from those who lead us. <laughs> That's where we don't have control. The real issue is that they're not aware or somehow feel justified that they can act like that towards you because they're the leader. When in fact, what they're doing is becoming not your leader. Because people that outburst with immature emotions will not influence you. <laughs> you, you just might look like you're following, but you're not. You don't really want to be around them. You don't really want to have anything to do with them because they steal the peace out of the situation. Proverbs 14, 9 says, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. In other words, it'd be smart to keep your composure. <laughs> but he who has a hasty temper, quick to respond in anger, <laughs> exalts folly, okay? Exalts or lifts up or encourages more chaos. And Paul told the Colossians that you have to put away all of these things. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Colossians 3.8, from your mouth. See, it comes out of your mouth. That's where these outbursts of anger come from. Paul said, you must put them all away. So how do we deal with it? Do not let the angry person or the outburst person, this emotionally out of control person, get away with it. In other words, do not let it influence you. Now, you can't stop them from doing it, but you can stop it from influencing you. And so you and I have to stand strong always in the face. One time I was at a, a conference and one of our leaders was there who was having an issue with me and had been giving me the cold shoulder for a couple months, not talking to me. And so we're at a conference and there's a lot of people around and I thought, well, you know, this is, this is just so silly. Like, let's be adults here. And so I'm heading into the conference through the doors and there's this leader sees me coming and avoids me, runs out the other door. The, the front of this church has like three or four doors. 
and they're all glass, right? And so I see them heading out the, the other way. So I ran through another door and ran way around the outside and came back and met this leader face to face, <laughs> gave him a big hug and said, hi, how you doing? <laughs> Two can play this game, right? Don't let them get away with it. I am going to act in the opposite spirit. So you can't beat anger with anger or outburst with outburst or argument with argument. Just refuse to be moved by it. Refuse to react to it. You just, uh-huh. <laughs> Another time there was a, a leader that was angry at me for something I had preached in a conference. So I drove to this leader's church, about a three-hour drive, and uh, went into the office, talked to the receptionist and said, I need to see so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, the receptionist gets on the phone and no, no, sorry, they're not in today. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I sat on a chair in the lobby, just waiting and watching. Sure enough, within 15 minutes, through the crack in the door, I see this leader walk by. So I jump up and run right into the back part of the offices there and uh, corralled this leader and said, uh, I hear you're angry with me. Do you want to tell me about it? <laughs> Do not allow those that lead you to be angry with you. Do not allow them to have these emotional anger outbursts. Hold them to account face to face. Be the adult in the room. Even though you're my superior in this case, I'm standing up against this thing that you're doing because it is not right, it's not healthy, and it's not helpful. But here's one of the biggest challenges that you're going to face with a leader who is so insecure that they can't control their emotions and that they acting improperly towards you, right? Angry with you or whatever. With that, there may be other things that they're trying to do, you know, manipulate you into doing what they want you to do or, or control you, whatever. But the people that are your peers or that, are, that you're leading are noticing and they're saying like, Al, why don't you go and meet with them and straighten this thing out? Like, why is this happening in the ministry? And the answer that you have to have for that is that I've tried. I've met with them several times according to, you know, scriptural mandate and we have not been able to resolve it. This is the best that I can do because this is my leader. It's not someone that I'm leading. If it's someone that I'm leading, then I can actually bring correction. But if it's someone that, that, that leads me, I'm not in a position to bring correction. So why then can't we take some other people and go and talk to this leader? Yeah, yeah, we've done that too. So that's kind of the second step in the biblical mandate, isn't it? When you have an issue with somebody and all you get is a bunch of excuses and self-justification. And so this is an issue that this leader is going to have to become self-aware of and going to have to be willing to deal with it. And until they're willing to deal with it, there's, it's out of my control. There's nothing I can do about it. So we are going to carry on as though they're not angry. <laughs> We're going to carry on as though everything's fine. So that's your non-accusing, not dishonoring answer when other people come and ask you, why are you having an issue with this leader? And you think, well, that's just strange that we have that kind of problem with leaders. You don't very often. Look, honestly, very few leaders are like this. You're not going to meet many leaders like this, especially <laughs> in your Victory Asia leadership family. I don't know anybody who loses their cool or bursts out in anger. Not, not saying that there isn't, because I've heard about it, but they haven't done it with me. Don't let anger rule in your own behavior and do not allow anger to rule in the behavior of those who lead you. Always let peace rule. Emotional outbursts like anger or whatever are ugly, they're wrong, they're destructive, and they're not to be tolerated. You know, some of the worst emotional uh, fits in the Bible that we see was Ahab and Jezebel. Not just Jezebel, but Ahab too, both of them. You know, they weren't just some cranky old couple sitting in the same place every week in church. They were the king and the queen of Israel, right? Jezebel was the queen of Israel. And so you think it's strange that the top leaders would have emotional insecurities and immaturity? That can happen real easy. So here's the deal. Don't let anger rule in your own behavior or in the behavior of those who lead you. It's ugly, it's destructive, and it's not to be tolerated. Yeah.